Welcome back. So today's video is part one in my Ubuntu 19.10 Eowyn Ehrman review. Now I'm going to be going into some of the overall impressions uh, and I guess highlighting the stuff that's new in this particular video. In part two, I'm going to try and get a little bit more detailed with some of the stuff that you guys were asking about on the community posts and on Twitter as well. So looking at comparisons, look things like the ZFS file system performance. So stay tuned for that. Uh, subscribe down below if you want to see that and uh, hit the bell and all that good stuff. On with part one of Ubuntu 19.10 review. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are looking at the Final release candidate of Ubuntu 19.10, Eon Ermin. So Ubuntu 19.10, there's a bunch of different release versions out there. And, uh, and we're going to be diving into a few of them as they uh, as they trickle out over this next week or so. Now, I want to preface it by saying I'm I'm recording this video on October 13th. So we are uh, four days away from the official gold 19.10 release of Ubuntu. Having said that, I am using what is basically the release candidate what will be going out. If there are any critical bugs or, or anything like that that Canonical finds between now and then, they'll, they'll be reviewed uh, and revise before the final uh, release. But here we are in um, in the latest desktop for the Ubuntu uh, for the Ubuntu distribution of Linux. It's definitely you can tell this distribution is one of the most popular out there. Uh, and the reason that I say that right at the start of this video is because uh, the focus and where this uh, company is choosing to steer this distribution solves the everyday desktop Linux users' problems. Uh, and probably not the experienced Linux desktop user, but just the people that want to use an alternate operating system to Windows and Mac. I'm going to get into why in, in just a moment. All right, so let's just start with the basics. And uh, and I'm going to reference a really great article uh, by Joey and the team at OMG Ubuntu. Uh, he has got a, a just a brief kind of summary of what to expect in this particular release. And uh, and just for all of you who uh, who just want a quick overview, here is some of the stuff that we that we've come to expect from uh, an Ubuntu release. So we've got latest Linux kernel, latest GNOME desktop environment. Uh, the experimental ZFS support for uh, a different file system, basically, that you can use on install. Uh, and apparently it has uh, some speed benefits to be uh, to be explored there, but it's not really its best application is uh, is probably in servers, not so much on the desktop. Uh, also, NVIDIA drivers will now ship on the ISO. So even if you don't have an internet connection, you will still be able to boot and install with a proper NVIDIA um, drivers out of the box, which I think is great. Um, you got New versions of most software, including Pulse Audio, which is the back end for everything that drives the audio. Uh, they've integrated some of the other stuff um, that the Fedora team have had in their releases for a little while now in Flickr free booting, which I really, really love. It just adds a whole nother level of polish to the system. And uh, and they've also apparently added a uh, external drive support to the Ubuntu dock here on the side. Uh, they've tweaked the default look and feel of the distribution just a little bit to give it that little bit more spit and polish. And uh, and they've also been trying to roll out much better theme support for um, for Snap packages. Snaps, we're going to come back to them. They're a big deal in this release. Okay, now go read the rest of the article for some of the stuff that isn't going to be included in this particular release of Ubuntu. Look, here are my here are my kind of long-standing thoughts right at the top. I've been playing around with this distribution for the last few days in its beta form and in its release candidate form. And here's what I think. I think honestly, if you're going to be installing and running Ubuntu these days and you want to use that uh, Linux distribution as the base for your operations, you really should be using the long-term support releases. Um, because in terms of like my personal case, at the moment I am running Ubuntu 18.04 and uh, and I am really excited for Ubuntu 20.04 next year. Um, but with these interim releases, they change stuff around a little bit on the back end. They try out and they experiment with a few things. Um, and so for those of you who are running rolling releases, at this point, you're already given up on the Ubuntu uh, release model of every six months having a new operating system. Um, but if you are interested in trying out the Ubuntu desktop and see what it's evolving towards, then uh, Ubuntu 19.10 is, is great. Or if you're just an Ubuntu fan and you want to just have the latest and greatest, then you've already got it and I don't need to convince you. 
Um, okay, so GNOME 3.34 is, uh, it does lend a lot of really great performance um, improvements. They say this with every GNOME release, but I honestly believe it's uh, it's true. As you can see, we're running the 3.34.1, uh, which is great because it's already integrated some of the bug fixes that have come since GNOME's release of 3.34. On the performance front, honestly, uh, Ubuntu has never felt snappier to me. Like the uh, the boot up sequence, uh, how long it takes to install, it just feels like they've uh, they've really gone to town with the the nipping and tucking with this distribution over the last even uh, even 12 18 months since Ubuntu 18.04 came out. That's the distribution that I'm currently using the most, and uh, it does feel a little bit chuggy at times. And I'm running on a pretty modern, uh, pretty modern kind of system with plenty of RAM and SSD and all that good stuff. So to me personally, uh, Ubuntu has never felt snappier. And if you want to have an ultra responsive GNOME experience, I would say go and use Fedora because it still feels snappier than this somehow. But uh, but Ubuntu is still feeling super fresh in this particular uh, release. Um, the classic Ubuntu look and, uh, look and feel is still here. The dock is still on the side and, uh, and the overall theme, like I mentioned before, has undergone a little bit of spit and polish. Um, now for me, it looks great. Like Ubuntu has never looked better out of the box. Um, is it, is it going to be everyone's cup of tea? Probably not, but that, you know, change it, you do what you want with it. Now, what I want to really talk about is, uh, is snap packages. I, I freaking love snap packages on one hand. And then on the other hand, I can see why they are divisive, maybe a little bit controversial in the Linux desktop user land. And uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, I just think it's incredible that um, when you look around at the ecosystem of, of desktop operating systems out there, uh, both the Windows App Store and the Mac App Store, I would say lag behind when it comes to effectively managing and updating and and giving uh, software to an operating system for a user to be able to install. Honestly, I think those two app stores lag behind. The Ubuntu Software Center, uh, or the uh, just based on the GNOME Software Center, I think has uh, the potential to be one of the best uh, software distribution platforms there is, uh, like bar none. And, uh, and I think Snap and the, the guys at Canonical know that Snap is instrumental to making Ubuntu work um, in the long run. Now, what am I talking about? The fact that you can go out and install proprietary and in some cases, uh, very differently licensed software straight out of the box on Ubuntu without mucking with uh, repositories or anything like that. You get details, you get updates automatically, you get ratings and reviews based on what's happening. The fact that you can get all those things presented to you straight out of the box alongside free and open source software, um, I think that's a huge win. And, uh, and for me personally, I'm more excited by just the sheer momentum of how many uh, snaps seem to be getting added all the time. Uh, so for example, a new one that just got added the other day was Blue Mail. Blue Mail is a uh, desktop mail client that uh, can manage multiple accounts and uh, is 100% is proprietary software. But for those who are trying to consider whether or not they can go ahead and use Ubuntu in their office setting or something like that, being able to have this kind of software available and easily packaged and easily maintained is a godsend for IT managers. Uh, now, here's where my opinion flips on the whole snap issue. Uh, so bear with me, I know I'm rambling here. But when it comes to uh, the, the apps that are installed out of the box with 19.10, uh, with, um, uh, some of these are snaps out of the box. So the calculator, for example, is a snap package. Uh, you also have the system monitor is also a snap package. You have a few others as well. Now, this was not exactly new to 19.10. This has been around for a while, but they've kind of taken it one step further and, uh, and shout out to Joe Collins uh, Linux channel for, uh, for putting me onto this is that nowadays when you actually go, let's say for example, you want to install Chromium. So you go sudo apt install Chromium dash browser, if I can type it properly. What will actually happen is after you give it your password, it will actually use a transitionary package to go out and then connect to the Snap Store and download Chromium Browser as a Snap package. Now, I haven't explicitly told it to use Snap 
I've kind of used a command that most Linux users are pretty familiar with, but it's actually gone out and uh, and it's bringing in the Chromium browser as a snap package by default. How do I feel about this? For me personally, I don't care. Like I, you know, I, I don't use the Chromium browser anyway, and Firefox and uh, the Ubuntu team still seem to do a pretty good job keeping that browser up to date through regular package management. Uh, but for, let's say for the Chromium browser or for uh, Google Chrome or other software that gets updated really regularly, it's a lot more work for the Ubuntu team to have to package up that particular piece of software four different times for different distributions, uh, uh, different versions of their Ubuntu system that they're currently trying to maintain. So when a new version of Chromium comes out, they can just ship one snap package and push it to, and push that update to all of the Ubuntu systems. Now, to me, that is really clever. And I love the fact that we've gotten to the point where you can have a piece of software that is secure. It's sandboxed from the rest of your system. You have to give it explicit permission to do things on your system and that it's automatically kept up to date in the background so that you don't have to worry about it. On the surface, those things are all great. And I would argue that Snap is actually more capable of doing this well than even some of the privacy stuff that they've included in macOS Catalina and definitely in Windows 10 as that's a bit of a mess anyway. Um, and so on that side of things, I'm really keen to see where Snaps go and to see their continued momentum moving forward. However, I don't feel that in every case they are the most efficient use of, of resources. Uh, they do take more downloads uh, than, than regular package management systems. As you can see, we're still stuck here looking at the Chromium snap package trying to download. It can take a while. Uh, bigger snaps take longer to load when you first boot them up. They're usually pretty good after the first time you do it. And bit by bit, these problems are being solved by the team at Canonical. And I am hoping that by the time we get to Ubuntu 20.04, a lot of the kinks that at least I personally have with Snap will be ironed out. Now, I 100% still use Snap, I use flat packs, I use app images, I use all of them. I love them for bits. They all have their pros and cons. Um, but I just, I, it's, it's inescapable to realize how much Snap packages mean to the Ubuntu ecosystem moving forward. And, uh, and the fact that this also benefits the rest of the Linux ecosystem, I think is a good thing. Anyway, let me know what you think about the snap packages in the comments below. Okay, so I realized there was quite a bit of a rant uh, there, but these are the things that are unique to Ubuntu. And while there isn't a whole lot else that's changing here on the front, I'm gonna talk about GNOME 3.34 in another video, probably the Fedora 31 uh, review that's coming soon. Um, and I'm gonna probably talk about other Ubuntu related stuff in some of the other desktop environments. But while we're looking at the Ubuntu mainline release, it's worth mentioning some of these things. Now, the only other thing worth mentioning is around 32-bit library support. And it's interesting that uh, that the recent release of macOS Catalina also has had 32-bit uh, issues right in the forefront of a lot of people's reviews. And, uh, and that is around 32-bit library support. Now, the Canonical, the team at Canonical made a decision uh, that they very quickly 180'd on because of uh, user feedback. And that was around the depreciation of 32-bit libraries in general. Uh, it led to Valve saying that they were no longer going to support Ubuntu because 32-bit libraries are integral to how Valve and Steam and a lot of the games uh, interact with your system, especially with a lot of Steam Play stuff and Proton. So, they, uh, they kind of reneged on that uh, very um, absolute decision. And what they ended up doing is kind of settling for a little bit of a middle ground where they will support popular 32-bit uh, libraries. So when it comes to Steam or gaming or wine or that kind of thing, they will continue to support 32-bit libraries. And also they have committed to support those into Ubuntu 20.04 as well. Uh, beyond that, I don't know. And, uh, and probably neither do they but uh, that is what it is. Okay, closing thoughts. I've already been going for too long. This is what you've come to expect from Ubuntu. There is nothing here that is gonna take you by surprise too much unless you really, really, really don't, 
don't like snap packaging. Uh, so there's plenty of good software here to love. There is way more software in the Ubuntu software store and especially with snap packages than there ever has been. Momentum is trending in the right direction. If you are looking to install this on a mission critical desktop, I would suggest waiting until Ubuntu 20.04. You'll have a little bit more spit and polish and you will also have the benefits of three years of support on the desktop as opposed to just nine months. If you are an Ubuntu fan and you just want the latest and greatest, go get it, you probably already have. Well, let me know what you think about all of these things in the comments below. Stay tuned in the coming days for future videos on Ubuntu Budgie, on Kubuntu Zubuntu, and, uh, and a few other bits and pieces, as well as uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed and Fedora 31. Like I said, October is silly season for Linux. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.